Okay, hi everybody. So welcome to a 30 minutes live chat with Prof. Martin from DID, who just became part of our teaching faculty about four or five years ago. Yeah, so if you're here while waiting for people to come, uh, just click onto the question mark icon at the bottom to submit your questions and Prof. Martin will answer them for you. Okay, so while we wait for questions, hi guys, so while we wait for questions to come in, Maybe you'll get Prof. Martin to introduce yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. So my name is Martin Danzer. I'm from Germany and I'm a trained engineer. I studied at the Technical University of Munich, which is, by the way, a partner university to NUS here in Singapore. And uh, I have a degree in electrical engineering and information technology. And in addition, I have also a degree in mechanical engineering. Mm. So quite technical background mm -hmm. and uh, I after my graduation at the Technical University of Munich I moved into the industry also based in Europe I took a long time in US as well uh, I started in an American computer company which actually brought me into the field of industrial design or design in general mm -hmm. and there I started uh, basically on computer aided industrial design which is my speciality since more than 30 years now Mm, so, oh. so what is computer-aided uh, industrial design? So that is basically that you design your object on the computer instead of a piece of paper and a drawing pen, for mm. example. Yeah. And that's your specialty? Yeah, that's my specialty. Yes. I'm working in that field since more than 30 years, roughly 15 years in industry, and now since about 15 to 17 years in academia. Mm. Mm. Okay, thanks Martin for the introduction. So while waiting for questions to come, maybe you could share a bit more about what exactly do you teach like, in DID? Okay, mm -hmm. um, I'm in the educated track here at DID. There is in general three different tracks for all the professors here. An educated track means that I do more teaching than research, for example. Okay? Mm. And uh, during this educated track, I'm usually teaching in fundamental classes and also additional classes and also platforms that mm. are the major three parts within DID. When I do the fundamental classes, of course, I'm teaching my special field, which is called computer-aided industrial design. Mm. So what does it mean? So you're starting with very simple uh, shapes, designing on the computer, and then actually visualizing it. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe eventually in the background you see a slideshow, there you see a couple of objects which are being uh, designed there from DRD students over the last couple of semesters. Mm. Okay, so today actually we have a lot of 3D printed objects that Martin has been supervising on. Uh -huh. So if you guys wanna want him to show you some of these stuff, you can ask him <laughs> through the questions chat. Maybe you could share a bit more about one of the objects that you like. Okay. So yeah. let's start with one of the biggest that? one first. Uh -huh. Then you have a, a kind of an idea. So this is kind of a um, vase or bowl or something. And it's 3D printed. Uh, so in general, 3D printing is not a very new technology, but it's a very common one right now. So it helps basically everyone, not only designers, also architects, all the creative people, to more or less um, make your three-dimensional things physical. Okay? Mm -hmm. And in this case, it was made physical with a 3D printer which is based on powder. Mm -hmm. And there's a laser which is solidifying the powder particles layer by layer. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, you can introduce very lightweight and very flexible structures. When you look at these objects here, you can easily manipulate it. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it's very strong in the bottom because it has a much stronger mm -hmm. net uh, connection at the bottom here. So what, what software was being used to make this? Um, there are various kinds of software. So what we are using here at our fundamental classes is called Rhino, mm -hmm. in particular Rhino 3D. Mm -hmm. And especially for this one, it's a plugin which, which is called Grasshopper, mm -hmm. which is more an algorithm-based uh, software package where it can mm -hmm. generate this kind of alternating waves in a very easy way. Mm. So these skills, um, by using software like Grasshopper, using learning how to use algorithms to design or Rhino, uh, are these skills that you need to pick up before or how is it being taught? 
trained. It's actually not necessary to have one of the skills before you enter DID here. Mm -hmm. So you're getting the fundamental training from scratch over the first two or three semesters. Mm -hmm. And uh, during that period of time, you are trained from the very beginning, from the very basic to the very advanced way. Mm -hmm. So there's enough time to learn that here. Mm -hmm. um, Especially since it's a, a very dedicated program for uh, creating 3D stuff, mm -hmm. it's not really taught outside of the universities or outside of these particular fields of industrial design or mm -hmm. adjacent creative areas. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Martin, for clarifying that. Okay, we have one question from Chikian. Uh, is sketching or CADing more effective to visualize ideas and design products? Sketching or CADing? More um, the idea of these two different things is very different. When you sketch something, you want to bring across your first initial idea. Mm. When you do CADing, then this idea is much more mature already, mm. more in thinking of towards a product or towards the manufacturing of this product. Mm. Mm. Actually, um, could you explain what CADing exactly is? For someone who doesn't know what it is. Yes. So, cutting in general is to bring an object into a virtual environment, meaning a 3D digital environment, mm -hmm. where you generate the geometrical shape of that particular object. Mm -hmm. So that is cutting in general. Mm -hmm. um, whether you have a very simple geometrical shape like a cube or a sphere, that's pretty easy. But usually our products nowadays are very complex in shape. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to understand, that you generate that complex shape in a digital environment. Mm -hmm. Rather okay. than sketching what you mentioned before on a piece mm -hmm. of paper. Okay, thanks for putting it in layman terms. Uh, okay, hi guys. Anyway, for those who just joined in, feel free to submit your questions by clicking on the question icon at the bottom of the screen, and then we can pin the question and everybody can follow. Yeah. So okay. So while waiting for questions to more questions to come in, maybe I'll have a question for you. So how uh, how has your experience been like teaching DID students? Because you joined about five years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Well, first of all, um, DID students or Singaporean students are very passionate. So, uh, because <laughs> as I mentioned before, I'm in academia since 15 years. I've mm. been teaching in Europe, in US, and, and in Asia. Mm. And it seems that you, all the DID students and the Singaporean students are working very hard, uh, mm. <laughs> very dedicated, very passionate, and uh, well, when working on particular projects, you know, they are very. Uh, eager to learn about these projects and mm. also very much in depth in learning about them. Mm. Mm. Yes. And was that surprising? Is that common? <laughs> um, that was not really surprising, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was interesting to recognize. Uh, I think it's in general that the Asian culture is a, a very dedicated culture, there's a lot of competition around. Um, I think that's one of the reasons for this dedication because lots of people here, there's always a competition starting from the early age in primary schools up to university level mm -hmm. and uh, I think that is one of the reasons for this dedication and for this hard working mm -hmm. environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, somebody asked, can I, oh, okay, uh, yeah, Kenneth, we'll just get to you, we'll show you the computer lab soon, maybe you like to look at, maybe in the last bit. Someone asked, Pilot Claudio asked, how hard is it to, st to start studying industrial design at NUS? How hard is it to start studying? Yeah. Um, is the learning curve very high? I think maybe that's the question. I think, uh, well, if you're dedicated to learn about industrial design, it's not so hard to start here. I think it's more that you're open enough with your mind because industrial design is, might be a little bit different to a lot of other areas to study. Mm. Okay? Uh, it covers a whole range of areas which you should learn about. It starts from shape and forms to materials to mm. manufacturing methods to service uh, to user interface areas and so on. So it's quite a broad range what you have to 
deal with mm. and I think that is maybe the hardest part in the beginning that you mm. make up your mind what is interesting to you mm. and uh, then you learn from the peers and from the tutors to work on uh, various projects and then mm. by working on the projects you're um, ramping up basically your knowledge. Mm. Mm, yeah, maybe to help answer the question as someone who just graduated last year. So I think it, uh, maybe to explain, um, in the year one, all students will have to go through design fundamentals. So you'll be picking up many different types of skills That's from different professors. So yes, I think in that sense, because you'll be picking up so many different types of skills, different domains, there will be a high learning curve, but everybody will be together on it, learning together. And I think in general, I would say that the culture is quite collaborative and will help each other out. Mm. That's kind of the common culture. If you see the studio is quite open, so it's easy for uh, friends to check in on how other people are doing. Yeah, so you'll definitely get a lot of help uh, from professors, both professors and also fellow classmates. Yeah, yeah so I think uh, for those who just joined in, I think Prof Martin was saying that even though the learning curve is high, I think that's why uh, DID will be looking for people with an open mind and wanting to pick up any new skills. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Thanks for that question. Who we'll hope it answers. Okay, next one. Let's see. So there is only can you show us? Okay. Okay, this is a, another good question about employability. Uh, Kenneth asks, how realistic how realistic is it to get a job after you graduate since the graduate employment survey says it's only around 50% full-time employment? Mm -hmm. Actually, we need to clarify that um, for the recent most updated GES survey, it's about, if you're asking about full-time employment, it's about 70%. Actually, I can answer this for you. Or would you like to answer? No, no, it's fine. <laughs> Me? Let's go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, okay. We need to clarify um, this. is a common question that we get every year. Maybe first thing to clarify is for the GES, for the Graduate Employment Survey, every year, MOE takes it uh, maximum four months after graduation, which is in November. And so in ID, actually, a lot of people don't really respond to the survey. <laughs> and, but in general, our culture is common for alumni right after graduating to take a holiday like for a few months because it's been a tough four years or to join uh, some alumni also join startups and uh, part-time internships if they want to be mentored by specific veterans in the field so that might not show up as a full-time employment yeah and of course not to say that people do take more conventional routes like joining big brands like uh, Shiseido uh, or consultancies like IBM Fjord Accenture Mm. Yeah, so there are many different paths that our alumni takes, but yeah, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> okay, so someone asked, okay, can you, can you show us the computer lab? Yes. Show yeah, can? Okay. <laughs> we okay, can. Cool. Yeah, 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 I'll bring my camera. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, we'll bring in the computer lab. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh. Okay, it's on live chat. Somebody yeah. is asking, can you show us the computer lab? Yeah. And okay. this is it. So this is our new computer lab, which was just installed roughly one and a half years ago, mm -hmm. um, with in total 19 laptops. And uh, one computer laptop, we have two projectors here on the left and the right hand side. And um, so these are the most up-to-date laptops which you could buy, uh, in this case from Hewlett Packard, HP, and uh, that's why we do our normal CAD lectures and uh, also project work when it's based on computer-aided uh, industrial design work, mm. and especially at the very end when we finalize our projects and visualize mm. uh, all the different um, objects and projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so actually, I think somebody asked um, what kind of laptop would you need to get to, yeah, what la kind of laptop would be recommended for ID? Well, you first of all, it? when you start here, it's not really necessary to immediately have a laptop. Of yeah. course, yeah. over the couple of semesters, it's uh, very normal that you work on your own laptop. And there, it's a 
normal um, laptop which you need. You don't need the highest business case laptop, uh, mm. but it doesn't even matter whether it's a Macintosh or a Windows yeah. based. Uh, both is working. Uh, yeah. We yeah. need a little bit of um, computer power and graphic power, so that should be part of your um, when you're looking at buying one of the computers. Mm. Yeah, we have, I mean, a combination. Uh, some students use Mac, some people yeah, use yeah. Uh, HP. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah if you no. don't have a laptop yet, no rush, because you can also use the computers in this lab. Sure, yeah. 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 They are open here 24-7, mm. so any student can come in uh, any time to use this stuff here. Yeah, the yeah. Okay, thanks okay. for giving us a short tour. Yeah. Okay, go back, go back. Okay. <laughs> okay, we have another question uh, from Ying Jie. She asked, do you need to have very good knowledge about digital technology before joining DID? No, you don't need. <laughs> Everything what you actually need during your profession, you're being trained here, mainly during the first two years of fundamental courses. As I mentioned already, so each of you will get uh, the exposure to this digital knowledge, what you need. It's not only 3D CAD, it's also when you think of uh, service design, user interfaces, uh, a lot of things have changed there. Um, mm. So that's what you get both in fundamentals and mm. also in the project work, which is going uh, mm. uh, starting in the second year and it goes up to the fourth year. Yeah, so Inse, if you're asking about uh, digital software, what we need to use, you'll get most of your training in year one. So you'll get to learn how to use Adobe's Creative Suite, that's so like Photoshop, right. yeah. Illustrator for graphics. In design and for three D CAD modeling, you'll probably use Rhino, Rhino yes. and, and Keyshot and Keyshot for visualization for, for rendering. Yeah, yeah. Hope that answers your question. Well, can I said thank you for showing in the lab. It looks awesome. Okay. Okay. Hey guys. Okay, so there's nine people here on the chat. If you just join, like please click. If you have any questions, click onto the question icon at the bottom of the screen and submit the questions. That'll be easier for people to follow. Yeah, no problem, Ming Jie. Okay, so while we're waiting for more questions to come in, maybe I'll ask the questions that I want to ask. Uh, maybe what's one thing that you always like want to impart to your students when you're teaching them? Yeah. Well, um, since industrial design is not really known what this is all about, mm -hmm. so I think you should inform yourself prior to uh, application of student uh, studying here um, otherwise you might be either disappointed when you don't find exactly what you're searching for on the other hand when you're very dedicated and you know that you want to uh, study industrial design then I think it's a profession for life so you're constantly <laughs> learning new things uh, mm -hmm. it's a very open and open-minded uh, mm -hmm area of participation mm. and uh, since everything is evolving constantly so the industrial design profession is evolving all the time mm -hmm. it's not a static uh, mm -hmm. situation so mm -hmm. everything is changing especially with the technology uh, rising up over the last 10 to 15 years I think it's a very uh, futuristic and uh, optimistic field Mm. which you want to study and probably also want to work on later on in your mm. profession. Mm. Mm. Thanks. Thanks, Martin. So the takeaway would be, uh, one thing that you want to impart would be like, to keep an open mind. Yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Very important. To keep up with like, the trends, yes. changes. Mm. Okay, there's one question from Anthony. Um, I think this is Anthony. What is the prospects for UI UX? Uh, user interface and uh, user experience. Also, will we be taught UI UX programs like Sketch, Figma, for example? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm. I'm not so familiar with that. I, I guess there would mm. be some other tutors which are more in the service design or UX UI uh, mm -hmm. training. Mm. But uh, we do a lot of projects in the last couple of years, especially for service design and UX UI. The um, mm. reason is simply because um, the whole smartphone technology requires a lot of UX UI um, experience now mm -hmm. and there are a lot of services coming out which are relying on digital mm -hmm. services in general, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's banking, whether it's um, 
online <coughs> shopping or something mm. like this. So a lot of things moving away from physical situations to the digital world. Mm. And wherever you enter the digital world, the UX UI interface is the touching point for each of mm. these operations. Mm. And uh, these operations are increasing and there's an increasing demand for learning about that. And we have lots of projects uh, which work together with either ministers here or agencies in Singapore mm. to get to these new services and to these new UX mm. UI uh, behaviors. Yeah, so Anthony, if you're asking about prospects after you graduate, uh, I know quite a lot of my batchmates after graduating, um, a lot of banks, like for example, banks, DBS. That's who are hiring a lot of UI UX yeah. designers and there are quite a few DID alumni who's in that uh, in DBS and also uh, for example one of the prominent alumni we have Celine Chu she is the senior UI UX designer in LinkedIn so mm -hmm. it's quite varied there are prospects um, but also will we be taught UI UX programs with a sketch Figma uh, yes actually these are things that you would need to kind of pick up along the way, yeah. especially in year two to year four, when depending on the projects that you choose, but some of them would require you to pick up uh, UI UX skills, uh, especially if you're working, collaborating with banks like DBS or Ministry of Manpower yeah. or GovTech. Those That's are right. some of the collaborations that we've had. So yeah, you'll definitely be picking it up. <laughs> okay, but also no worries like, if you don't have that experience, we have people in DID who will be able to help you with it. Teaching and training mm. on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. But specific programs, usually it's in our culture to try to pick it up uh, by ourselves. I'll also right. get our classmates, especially our classmates who are from Polytechnic, who have more experience, you know, to just help each other out. Mm -hmm. mm. I hope that answers your question. Okay. Anything you'd like to add? On top of that, there are classes like Human Centered Design, mm. which are turning around this issue on how do you interact, especially with uh, digital technology and digital means, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what you're getting trained during these programs mm -hmm. and during the projects here. Mm. Agree, agree. Okay, we have this. Oh, the mouse is Okay, I'm trying. Let me pick a question. A few coming in. Okay, there's one from Orkful. How do you find industrial design has changed? over the last 10 years with the rise in digital technology? Mm -hmm. So it's changed in a way that, um, especially countries like Singapore, but not only uh, Singapore, moved a little bit away from the more industrial related industries to service related industries. Mm -hmm. uh, that means that the whole aspect of industrial design moved towards what we just mentioned, UX, UI or service design, mm -hmm. and lesser to uh, generating new objects or new mm. physical objects. Uh, Just on its own and well, isolation. That's on its own, yeah. yes. Uh, um, especially over the last couple of weeks we realized that we are very depending on physical objects coming from China. Now, China is the workbench of the world now. They are producing all the physical objects and then they come over here and we have to provide the software to run all of those objects. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, that is what's happening also over the next couple of years, that uh, all of these highly developed countries are moving away from the physical-based industries towards service-based industries or mm -hmm. knowledge-based industries in the mm -hmm. next term. Uh, so, Martha, you were saying that uh, industrial design is no longer about designing just physical objects That's on correct. its own like in isolation. But it's also uh, being part of a bigger system like services. So could That's you explain uh, what service design is? Um, it's simply when you look at your smartphone, how do you operate with your smartphone? It's more that you only, you not only have the, the smartphone in hand, you're basically touching on the screen and you're operating everything with some touch points or with swipe comments or something. So that is basically the change of behavior with objects. Previously, you had to push certain buttons or you have to open things or close things. That's no longer valid anymore. So it's more or less that you rely on uh, virtual touch points on UX, UI interfaces. Mm. And that's not only for the smartphone, it's also for machines. Uh, if you think of smart homes, uh, mm. you can change your lighting situation at home with your smartphone and mm. things like that. Mm. 
So you're saying um, like anything that we design is not doesn't exist in isolation, but That's it's part of a bigger system. That's correct. And yeah. industrial design is moving towards design that connects everything together. It's not. It's part of a bigger system. It's a whole Embedded ecosystem yes. of uh, things, which includes some of the physical objects, but also the interface between those. Mm. Mm. Martin. Okay, there are more questions. If we have five minutes left, let me pick which one would be good to clarify. Uh, not helpful for employment trends either. Okay. Okay, another question from Anthony. Uh, how are industrial design and human computer interaction related? <clears throat> how is ID and HCI related? Um, at the very end, you always need a physical device to do an interaction. Mm. Let's come back to the smartphone also. Uh, the only touch point of smartphone is that you're touching your sensitive surface, mm. but in the background you always have physical object, whether it's an electronic equipment or a mechanical system or something which operates something. Okay? Mm. Mm. Uh, so there's always a relationship between the digital interface and the physical object which activates a motion or an action or something. Mm. Mm. Okay, I hope that answers the question. Okay, and then another one. Okay, is Masters helpful? Ah. Okay, I have one question from Kenneth again. Is Masters helpful for employment? Uh, Charles, you know. Is Masters needed at all, like for employment? Is it? Yeah. Um. That depends a little bit where you want to work later on. Uh, I think over the last couple of years it turned out that master is not really needed if you yeah. just want to get employment. Okay, <laughs> uh, If you want to get maybe a higher rank position or a more in-depth knowledge about a certain aspect of industrial design, I highly recommend a master as well. Mm -hmm. But for mere employment, I think it's not necessary. Mm. Yeah. So, I think definitely no. It's not needed for employment. Yes. I think a lot of our alumni, like right after graduation, they would go out to work. Uh, but some also do pursue a master's, like Tia Ying. Like after, after studying ID for four years, and she went to uh, Aalto University and studied. I think it was strategic design, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's up to you. Like when, what season of your life would you? wish to pursue for the studies, but it's definitely not needed for employment. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you go for the master, I would add, uh, I would recommend to do it overseas because then you get exposure to other cultures and mm. other industries mm. and that might help you in narrowing down your focus of industrial design during your master program. Mm. Mm. And did you pursue a master's also? Did you pursue a master's? I? Yes. 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 I, have, I don't have a bachelor master, I have a diploma engineer, which mm, is a typical okay. German degree, mm. but it's somewhere in between the master and the PhD. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, we have last two minutes. Uh, if you're here and you have any questions, just click onto the question button and type in the questions. We have two minutes left. If there are any urgent ones, we'll try to answer them. Uh, if not, maybe like last words, last two minutes, uh, maybe. Could you share with us what you think? Oh, he's already overseas. <laughs> Can you tell us um, what are what do you think are three character traits that you think is important for someone coming into ID to have character traits, like not skills? Um, <laughs> you should be able to communicate very well. Mm. Because industrial design is lots of communication, lots of discussion. Mm. It's not so much about the mere technical skills. That's what you can learn during the studying here. Mm. Um, I think I mentioned already, you should be open-minded. Uh, mm. You should be willing to learn, not only during the years of study. Uh, mm. Industrial design is a long life learning mm. profession. Um, <laughs> Chaos is high as a go, Martin. <laughs> So dedication is something which you need, communication, um, yeah, um, maybe the availability to take up stress. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, <laughs> Why do you say that? Because we have long working hours all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also very competitive business. You mm -hmm. know? 
so I think um, eventually stress will build up during the study here and uh, you have to cope with that. Mm -hmm. um, also when you go overseas, for example NOC, uh, NOS Overseas College, there is a parallel uh, work hours between studying and working in, in, as an internship. Mm -hmm. So I think it's quite a tough and stressful time as well. Mm. So. <laughs> okay, before it sounds too scary. <laughs> yeah, maybe, um, maybe one last thing. What advice would you give to like, prospective students who are right now are just so considering like, what course they wish to join? Yeah. Well, if you're dedicated a little bit to the creative world, mm. I would definitely go for it as the design because mm. it uh, combines the creative world and also the technical world if you're open for that mm. and um, it gives you a, a good opportunity to learn a broad field which mm. enables you later on to go in a, in a lot of industries and a lot of areas for employment. Mm. Mm. Very wide field of applications and also of industries which you can approach later on. Mm. Mm. Thanks, Martin, for that Thank advice. You. Yeah, so I hope today's session was helpful. Uh, it's been 30 minutes, and you can join the next live chat if you're just here. The next live chat will be on Friday, 6th of March. I think there will be three sessions. So, just if you want to stay updated, just follow us on Instagram and we will keep posting uh, updates on our live stories, Instagram stories. Okay, hope this is helpful. Okay, thanks Martin. Okay, thank In you. 30 minutes. Thank okay. you. Thanks guys. For sharing a good session. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.